So hello everyone. To all our Connections Luxury members and to all our friends from around the world, a very warm welcome to you. It's great to see so many of you logged on today. My name is Sadia, Buyer Manager at Connections Luxury, and it's my pleasure to introduce our first Connect Talks of 2022. Optimise your business growth with coaching advisor Natalie Macaluso of The Orange Side. So, as you know, Connections Luxury is the international private community for trusted decision makers in high-end travel. Everything we do is specifically designed in the Connections way of doing business, which is a pioneering networking concept combining one-to-one -one meetings and memorable experiences to forge long-lasting business relationships. Our monthly Connect Talks form a series of curated educational sessions provided by connections advisors and experts across a variety of topics. Mm, social media for Emma. If you do wish to find out more and get in contact with any of the advisors, then you can do so via the dig digital platform. This session will be particularly interactive. And so in the spirit of our ethos, I encourage you all to get involved and have your cameras on as the workshop will include breaking out into groups for further discussion. Before I introduce today's guest, mm -hmm. I wanted to mention yeah. that today I'm joined by my colleagues, Hannah Whitney from Operations, who will be mm -hmm. sharing information, spotlighting our session, and will be interacting with you in the chat. Also a shout out to any of the Connections team who are joining us today. Mm. I'm sure many of us are getting more and more okay with Zoom, but please can I ask you all to place yourselves on mute. And if during the talk you have any questions, please do not hesitate to pop them in the chat box. This session will last up to an hour and is being recorded. So if you have colleagues or friends who might find this Connect talk useful, we will be distributing it in the coming days. So let's begin. The new year is traditionally a time to restart and refocus, and I'm sure many of us create new plans and checklists for the year ahead. But how far do we get to succeeding those goals or objectives? How do we hold ourselves accountable to ensuring that we do? And are they even realistic? Together with Natalie, we wanted to take a moment in January to help narrow your focus to a specific area for growth and set you a 90 day challenge. Today, you will develop a workable plan of action and have the chance to report back at the end of the 90 days so that there is full accountability. We're delighted to be welcoming Natalie Macaluso to host this Connect Talks. Natalie is the founder and business coach at The Orange Side, which she established in 2020 with the aim to work with business owners to help combat the challenges in response to the global pandemic. The Orange Side empowers and nurtures an entrepreneurial mindset in leaders and their people to achieve what is required in the most efficient and effective way possible. Natalie's entrepreneurial journey spans several sectors, including travel, the arts, performance, and motivation. Natalie cut her teeth within the family business at H&A Motivation, primarily organizing corporate group incentives to countries around the world. She then turned her attention to the West End Theater before returning to travel with Kiave Concierge to focus on luxury FIT and of course concierge. So thank you Natalie for joining us today to help explore what opportunities are available to us. And without further ado, I'll hand over to Natalie. Thank you very much, Sadia. Um, thank you for, to Connections for having me. And thank you very much to all of you for being here today. I really appreciate you giving me your time so that I can hopefully help you do some learning and definitely some doing. We're gonna be making some choices today. And I know that things get so busy sometimes that we don't always have the opportunity to do that. I'm just going to gently remind everyone to put yourselves on mute if you haven't already done that, because I know that there can be feedback sometimes. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're going to be doing some learning and some doing as well. 
So I'd like you to sharpen both of your pencils and your minds. We're gonna be doing some work on your own, but also I'm gonna be asking you to drop some things into the chat at certain points as well. So the more you participate, the more I can help you here today. And remember, your questions and your contributions could be of huge value to someone else. So don't be afraid, this is a safe and friendly space. And also, crucially, we are gonna have things to action afterwards, because I wanna make sure that you've got something to take away to work with. And as Sadia mentioned, I will be setting a 90 day challenge, which you can have some accountability for afterwards. I'd like to welcome some people that I know, some faces that I recognize, some names that I've seen before, and um, I look forward to speaking with some of you that I don't know. I would like to say, because we've got such a broad range of people here today, that I'm gonna be taking a really high level view of, to grow your businesses, but bringing what I think are the essentials down to eye level to be the most useful for you today. So as I said, we're gonna give you time to focus on the vital areas for growth, what they are in your business, and that's specific to you because they're gonna be different for everyone. Establishing some principles as well to help guide you on that growth plan as leaders of yourself and others. So what can you expect? Well, first off, I'm gonna set the scene. That's gonna be my theatrical background coming to the forefront. And then I'm gonna ask you the most important question. And that's gonna be the first time that you're gonna to need to do some work. We're gonna go through my optimized model, which is gonna be a visual roadmap, if you like, to really help you engage as you go through your growth plan and keep you on track. And then we're gonna look at the areas for growth, the places that you need to identify in your business to grow and the priorities, because there's gonna be lots of areas you could, I'm sure, work on, but what, what do you need to make a priority? And then finally, the 90 day challenge. As I said, it's to help you take action right away. And it's actually something that you can repeat throughout the year in your business. But you could only report back to me now on this 90 days. So let's, let's get started and set the scene. Speaking to travel advisors and anyone working in this wonderful business, we don't need to, it's, it doesn't take a miracle to know that you have to start with destination. And in all of this, we're about preparing yourself and your business for growth. We want to lay the best foundation. And that really does start with the destination. We need to get clear about where you want to end up and that's gonna set you up for the whole year. And we're gonna do that shortly, like I said. It's gonna be your GPS and your North Star to keep you on track. Now in so doing and setting that destination, as you seek to grow your business, you could look back with a satisfied sense of achievement that you really have become more. You have grown as you said that you were going to do. And thirdly, you need to work your plan. Principles are great, but action is really what matters. And to have a workable plan that you can make your destination the next reality in your business. So focusing on these three areas, we seek to really optimize the opportunity that you have. Now, I did put optimize right in the title of this talk. So I thought it would be important to just remind ourselves what it is to optimize. Here is the dictionary definition, and you will see that I disagree with some of it, but the bits I do agree with are that we want to make this effective, useful, and efficient. I do not agree that we need to make it perfect. Perfection is important. I know, especially when we're curating plans for other people, that is important, but I don't want perfection to be the focus here. We're looking for progress, and we're gonna talk about that later. So I said we're going to start doing some work straight away, so pencils are at the ready. I'm going to ask you the most important question now, and why is this so important? Because it's going to set your destination, really, and this is what we're going to work on today. So the more detail you can do right now, the better it's going to be. I'm going to give you two minutes, which is enough time, but you can also extend this later. A direction is better than goals. A goal, well, that measures progress, but it won't set your direction. So the most important question, 
that I'm going to ask you. And as I said, you're gonna have two minutes to answer it. Write it down. I'd like you to imagine for me, if you will, that you're walking down a street of your choosing in 12 months time. The sun can be on your face and the wind can be in your hair as you choose. And I would like you to imagine that you bump into yourself from today. What do you need to have done? And where does your business need to be for you to be delighted to meet yourself in 12 months time? Think about that. I can just ask you to check if you're on mute. Thank you. Now, when you think about this, dream big, look forward to a future. Where do you need, what do you need to have done and where does the business need to be? It might help for you to think what went really well over the past year. What went well and what do you want to double down on? What could have gone better? What would it mean to you for it to have gone better? Keep the focus always on what you want. Consider your business, everything that you know about it and what it is you'd like to achieve. Thirty seconds remaining. All right. Now, as I said, whatever answer you've written, you can extend on that, you can build on it. But what you have is going to form the basis of a lot of what we do today. So the optimized model, I have created a visual representation to help you because Stephen Covey in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. And if you have, read it again because there's always something new to pick up. But in his book, the second habit is begin with the end in mind. And I created this model to help you get that big picture overview as you seek to lay the best foundation and optimize your business, I hope that this master model will help. Principles that I think are vital when it comes to understanding where to go next. Giving you that big picture, as I said, of what you need to do and where you need to go. And it's important, as I said, you're gonna be leading yourself, but in many cases, you're leading others. And this model can be useful with any big projects that matter. Now, as we go through with each stage of the model, I'm gonna ask you a question. This is not something that you have to share with us. This is just something for you to briefly reflect on. Maybe you wanna make some notes on it. And then at the end, I am gonna ask you to drop some answers into the chat. So the first step, as we've already discussed, is destination. Where do you want to end up? And destination, as we said, is really better than goals because a goal will measure progress, but it won't set your direction. It won't set you up. We need to look forward to create a compelling and clear picture of where you want to get to. I spend a lot of time on this part with my clients, making sure that they are certain about what they need to achieve specific to their business. You've started this already, but as I said, I strongly encourage you to take time after we leave our, each other today to build it out further, make it specific and make it tangible. This part really is the vital first step in optimizing for business growth. You do already have a clear understanding of where you'd like to be in the next 12 months. Your direction is your North Star for your next year of leadership. So I'd like to consider this. If I was lucky enough, and I would be lucky if I found myself in this situation to come to your office 
wherever you are in the world and speak to one of your employees or any of your employees in their lunch break and ask them this question, how many of them would get it right? If you work alone, if you don't have a team, have you yet decided what the priorities are? The second stage is responsibility. Build through ownership, personally and within everyone in your organization. I think someone has just asked a question, so let's just see. You will get some handouts at the end, yes, no problem. So we want to build through ownership, as I said, personally and with everyone in your organization. Self-leadership, is actually 90% of the battle and how you can instill that responsibility in others. Go public on any goals or priorities that you do set, share them with your company, share them with people that need to know. And now as leaders, no doubt you do this already, but this is a reminder that we all must take responsibility for our own progress and growth. Because progress and growth happens when we decide that no one else is to blame because blame actually is something that just happens in the past and there is nothing that can be done about that. Once we assume responsibility, all our attention goes to the now and the future. And again, that is where growth happens. Even after the past two years, find what you can control and take full responsibility of it. With that in mind, just take a moment to consider what has the lack of responsibility cost your business this year? The third step, collaboration. We is better than me. This is probably my favorite part actually. And actually I would like to share the three most important words that I ever learned in business, which is who, not how because personal responsibility doesn't have to mean we need to have every resource within us. That would be impossible. As you create your destination that you want to get to, this growth you want to see in your business, you need other people to help you get there. Good collaboration really is empowering to everyone involved. And also it's gonna expand your networks. Collaboration is the new competition. Your world is gonna get bigger if you collaborate with others. It's not gonna get, it's not gonna shrink the, the piece that you can get. And I see that also happen too many times. Collaboration is opportunity. Have the conversations that you've never had before. And that does also seem to be another great byproduct of this pandemic. People are willing to have more conversations and work together. When you're collaborating, it's important to know your why. Maybe you've read Simon Sinek. If you haven't, again, it's a great book to apply for your business. Um, but I think there's a yes and here, not just know your why, but who you're doing it for, who's involved. If it's just your colleagues, a business partner, or maybe loved ones as well. Collaboration and connection. How important is that? The name of our excellent hopes even speaks to that. We need it more than ever. Collaboration though, it really is a two-way street. It's not just about what they can bring, it's what you can bring. If you want to make your world bigger with opportunity, who do you want sitting at your table? What are they and you collectively going to bring to that party? Have you thought about who your top three collaborators are and why? And finally, it's movement. I said it before, we want to prioritize progress and growth. Movement really is the final piece that powers this whole model. And as you see, can see, it's a circle, it builds. Perfection should never be the goal. I see too many people stall and hit the brakes and they as they strive for perfection. And it's, it's just not useful. There are three major setbacks when it comes to movement, if you're striving for, for perfection, in fact, and that's disappointment, discouragement, and distraction. Progress is the goal. That's what I want you to keep in mind for today. Always be thinking forward. And as such, 
you want to be making steps, not leaps. Leaps are when overwhelm happened and that's when things fall apart. So we want steps, not leaps. And also you can recognize to be consistently moving forward in a purposeful way. How do you do that? Well, stay focused, stay curious, keep learning, ask questions and elevate others around you. Finally, where does your focus need to be? Where are the three areas of your business that aren't moving fast enough right now? So that's the model in full. And if you look around the outside now, you can see what I think are the byproducts when you combine all of this. When you follow each of these four principles, this is what happens. Now, I'm going to ask you in a moment some questions, and I'd like you to drop your answers into the chat as some of you are already contributing. So thank you. We won't spend too long on this. I just want your first thoughts. But when you have destination and responsibility, you get conviction. It's the belief that what you're doing is really worth it. You know where you're headed and you are willing to take responsibility for it. Conviction is what transcends circumstances and really serves your future. So I'd like to ask you, and please share your answers. If you were to double your level of conviction, what would you get? What would be the, res the result of you doubling your level of conviction right now? Clarity, excellent. Four times the growth, nice. Growth, wonderful. Oh, sorry about that. Purpose, excellent. Direction. Growth. Growth and clarity. So it's, if you were to double your level of conviction, what would you get? What would be the outcome? Break even and possibly growth. Okay, cool. More clarity. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Movement, nice. So I'm gonna move on because we've got three to get through, three more to get through. So when you have responsibility and collaboration, you get synergy. Synergy results from our combined efforts to do more together than we could do on our own. The whole really is greater than the sum of its parts. So I'd like to ask you, where do you think the lack of synergy cost you the most this past year? Motivation, okay. Time, yeah, always, always tricky. Staff being laid off, very difficult. Comparison to others, yeah. Lack of manpower. Mm -hmm. Options for clients, energy. Spinning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult when, uh, when these things, when these things uh, are lacking. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to move on. So when you have collaboration and movement, you get momentum. Now, momentum really is a leader's best friend, and it will give you the encouragement you need to execute your growth plan. So finally, I'd like to ask you, what do you get when your business moves all by itself? Time. <laughs> Motivation. Ease and enjoyment, excellent. More revenue, peace, yep. Loving this, energy and peace of mind, satisfaction. What do you get when your business moves all by itself? Ease, joy, 
energy to get more. Yeah. And that's what we want. More satisfaction and more energy to go and get some more. Finally, when you have movement plus your destination, you get progress. And remember, we want to strive for progress, not perfection. So I'd like to ask you to take a minute and just share with us what small step would make the biggest difference in your business today? Focus. Not, I think it's not, you mean it's not small, but letting go of perfection would make a big difference, right? It's, it's a very difficult one. It's a very difficult one. I, I understand that. Tuning out of all the distractions. Yeah, the question is, what small step would make the biggest difference in your business today? More areas of work? Do we mean expanding? Prioritizing tasks? Priorities, concentration, training. Yeah, better prioritizing. Letting go of fear around perfection. Setting times to work on different tasks and sticking to that, excellent. Synergy, great. Well, thank you very much for everyone that shared that. That was really insightful. Um, perfectionism coming up a lot and as I said it's a real tricky one because we want things to be great but we don't want it to hold us back and if I could give everyone some more time on every level then I definitely would so I'm just going to move forward now to look at the questions that I set just take a moment to consider them if we're thinking about destination does everyone in your organization yet know the top three priorities for this year? And if that's just you, great, just me too. Do you know what the priorities are? If it's responsibility, what has the lack of responsibility cost your business this year? Collaboration, who would be your top three collaborators and why? And movement, what are the three areas of your business that aren't moving fast enough? So now we're gonna jump forward to look at the focus areas for growth. Now that you've considered all of those things, when we, when we all know, when, sorry, when we all know to do, we, we all know to do, trying to do too many things at any given time, then very little gets done. Focus is hard and productivity declines. The brain actually doesn't like it, but that's a different discussion for another day and goes to show why I was stuttering because I was trying to read messages in the chat and I couldn't do everything all at once. So the things that you give your absolute focus to, that is what is gonna give you your ultimate outcome. So you need to be selective about where you put your focus. And after everything that you shared before, I think that is true. So when I asked you, the most important question at the start. Some of the themes that are be coming up were coming up in that. In order to achieve it, what do you feel are the key areas of your business that you need to make a priority? Where do you think your area of focus needs to be to make that a reality? Now you can write a few, but we're looking for three. What are the key areas of your business you need to focus on to make it a reality? If you'd like, you can share them in the chat as well. We can share that. Where will growth have the biggest impact in you achieving that outcome? 
client experience, networking, relationships with suppliers, great. Marketing and client care, yeah. Trained staff and experienced, mm -hmm. Product development. Systems and marketing, yep, Ex expansion, product knowledge, destination expertise, customer satisfaction service, and business and networking. Technology, for sure. Sustainability, yep. So now that you have some ideas about places that you want to give your focus to, let's try and work on some priorities. Client engagement and supplier relationship, absolutely. So some of you have only shared one, some of you have shared a few. Now we're gonna try and identify where the priorities are. Obviously, if you've only got, if you if you already know what, what you want it to be, that's absolutely fine. If you just wanna take this and think about how you're gonna use it um, at another time, then that's fine too. So we're gonna go through a four step process now to understand where your priorities are. So if you've got three things, again, destination expertise, client experience, marketing, those things, you can use all of those as we go through the next stage. So let's identify some priorities. So step one, what I'd like you to do, write your list of those things that you were looking at. And first, decide where that area of the business is right now on a scale of one to 10, as I've kind of done. Be honest with yourself, but don't be hard on yourself. Consider where you are in each of those areas. As I said, Today, if you had to give yourself a number between one and 10, where would you put that? Some of you that have got a few, we'll just give you a little bit more time. Don't use take too long. And now the second step is, where would you like it to be in 12 months time? Now, it's very easy when you think about this particular number to say that in 12 months time, I want it to be 10 out of 10. If you do, wicked, I'm totally on board with that. But I also don't want you to feel like you have to arbitrarily say 10 out of 10. You can see in my examples, I've given it a lower number. That's just because you want to make it realistic and it's all about what you want for your business. And also if the business, if you're going to rate yourself somewhere at a three out of 10 now, is it realistic to get it where you want it to in 12 months time? So be realistic, that's step two. Where do you want the business to be in that area in 12 months time? Ten more seconds, just in case. Now, I want you to look at the first number you wrote, where the business is now. If you've got a few, look across all three of them, or four, however many you have. When you consider the gap between where you are now and where you want it to be in 12 months time, can you spot where you need to put your attention first? Now, this is really gonna come down to your big overarching answer to the most important question. If my desired outcome is that I really increase my customer retention and most of my revenue comes from repeat business, then that's where I'm gonna put my area of focus, even though it's the highest number. Do you see what I'm, what I'm getting at here? Great, thank you for sharing those numbers. 
Love that we want to get customer attention to 10 out of 10. Well, it's up to you, Heidi, just to answer that question. It, you might want to put it where the lowest change is, but that it really depends on what your priority is. So like I said, if I'm looking at those areas, yeah, baby steps, exactly. It doesn't have to be that the lowest number first is your number one priority, but where does it, looking at that, where do you then feel, actually, I would like to put my attention here first? And as some people are already doing that, I would, yeah, loving to share some of these. So Darby's going to do marketing, nine out of 10, client care, 10 out of 10, and assistance, nine out of 10. This is fantastic. Big numbers here. And in which case, where do you want to start your, where do you want to put your focus first, Darby? Where's the priority? Marketing. Does anyone else want to share what they would like? Where they'd like to get to? Number one priority is client experience. Excellent, 10 out of 10. New destinations and hotels, good. Customer retention is your focus. Retention of your existing customer is your priority. That's okay that it's your biggest leap. You can break it down into steps, but you know what your number one priority is. So actually that's probably the best place to start to put your focus right now. If you've got the biggest leap, that's where you need to take the most amount of time on it. Recruiting eight out of 10, marketing nine out of 10, social media 10 out of 10, customer base. Okay, great. Now we've got the four step, fourth step here and we can dig into this a little bit more in a, in a moment because I, as we've just seen through some of those, people have chosen their number one priority like I just discussed with Heidi. So when you, if you can choose one of them that's the most important one to focus on right now to begin with, can you write a quick list of all of the improvements that need to be made? So if we are looking at customer retention, which happens to be a favorite subject of mine, then what offers do we need to be making to them? What kind of loyalty programs are we going to be encouraging? What increased communication needs to be happening? From all of the things that you think you should be doing, what, what is in that list? Write the improvements that need to be made in that area. Be specific just to one area right now. If it's an increase in Ex customer experience specifically, what are the steps that you'd like to take? Regular contact with them, yeah. We need to know, we know that that needs to happen. If it's sustainability, I do know that there's going to be another expert talking about sustainability on the next Connect Talk, so definitely sign up for that. Getting a PR company in more countries, prepare and execute roadshows, have fam trips and participate in more events for marketing. Excellent, you know what you need to be doing. Wonderful. So I'm gonna jump forward now because I wanna set you up for the 90 day challenge. Now that you have identified that priority, you found what you need to be doing. We're gonna put it into a framework, which as I said, is my 90 day challenge. So having identified it, whether it's client experience, marketing, whatever it's going to be, I'm gonna give you this framework to accelerate your desired outcomes. And you can do it for 90 days and then you can repeat it. And for this one, 
you can report back to me at the end of the 90 days to let me know how you've got on. I will show you the mechanism at the end, how we're gonna do that. So I've got another important question for you. Now, what we were going to do is have a moment of breakout rooms, but God bless all technology, the breakout rooms have locked their doors for us. So we're gonna do this in the chat as best as we can, but we've been doing pretty good all right so far. You've been uh, excellent participants. So the question that I need to ask you, now you've decided whether it's, again, client experience, marketing, destination, what it's gonna be for you, what is your key area of focus right now? Another very important question. What is preventing the business from growing in that area? What's standing in your way? Because whatever the answer to that question is gonna form the basis of what you need to focus on right now. Now, as I said, we were gonna do this in a breakout room. So I'm gonna try and speak to some of these as well. So time to work on it and understanding analytics. And that's in regards to marketing, I think, right, Darby? Yes. So let's keep, let's keep a note of these so that we know what's standing in our way. Yeah, the question is, in your chosen area of focus, then what is, present, what is preventing the business from growing in that area? What's standing in your way? Consistency in posting. And what's, what's stopping you with consistency, Paula? Economic resources and time, okay. Travel restrictions, Mathilde, yeah. It's, it's a very, a very tricky one. Discipline, honoring my commitment to my plan. At the moment, low budgets for marketing and travel restrictions. Uh, Donna, it's okay if you're not sure. Um, your goal is client growth and I'm active. If you're actively working on it, then that's cool. Maybe you don't see any major roadblocks right now. It's just sometimes, sometimes the reason that we're not moving forward on something is because we see all of the reasons that we can't. So that's what I'm just trying to help identify because then we can, we can get around them. Disliking social media. So I find that I'm resistant. Yeah, I totally get that. In many cases, it's finding ways to make it work for you because there are, there are ways of doing it. Um, I think often we have to try and fit inside a particular box when it comes to social media and it can be a, a real tricky one to navigate, but you can find ways to make it work for you. Uncertainty due to COVID, yep. Yeah. If anyone would like to, if it would be easier, we could bring some of you in to have a chat with me. I could talk with you more directly if anyone's up for that. Seeing as we can't get the breakout rooms to work. Great, I think we've got three already. Heidi says, yes. Sorry, I was muted. You have RV with you at the moment and we will add some. Hi, RV. sorry, I was just looking for you. Yes, hi. Hi, there we are. Hi, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were waiting for me to, to answer. Hello, everybody. So great to be here. We, I am in my kitchen in Venice. I'm in my kitchen because I have two children and both of them are having uh, different lessons on the other sides of the house. So Wonderful. I did in here. Well, I love Venice. So what, what is your area of focus that you want to look at for the next 90 days? And what's preventing the business growing in that area? So, as I said in the chat, what um, I have a, a big time lacking. So the first thing is I am in the middle of 
recruitment mm -hmm. in order to prepare myself for uh, our company for 2022 and for the next season. Yeah. And uh, it, I have to dedicate actual time to train people. Yeah. And for that, I sacrifice many other things such as marketing, public relations, social media, everything yeah. else. So it's basically right now, I am a DMC. What I do right now is taking care of actual clients, which are not so many, and training people. Right. So what's the thing that you would like, if, what's the thing that you would like, the area of your business that you would like to focus on to grow? Marketing, definitely. Marketing. And your biggest obstacle to that right now is time. Yes. Also, now, also, also economical resources, because it's after two years, what we have right now in the company for investment is much less than what, you know, like the, than what I would usually put. So usually sure. we decided that we are going to put 30% of our uh, revenue into marketing. And uh, right now it's about 10%. Okay. So thank you very much for sharing that. Thank you for coming up here and sharing the stage with me. Um, so we know that you want to focus on marketing and uh, economics and time are the two things that are preventing you the most. Right. So going forward, when I ask you the next question, you need to take into consideration, like if you were, if you had time, what would you do? Um, I would dedicate more, definitely I would dedicate more time, uh, more of my, resor my resources, my person, my staff and everything to, um, to be experts in the destination, yeah. to take care of clients, like, like personal attention to everybody, to, to possible clients, to prospects and to already existing clients. Is that specifically going to help the marketing though? No. I don't so, know. Specific, so specific to marketing, if you had time, what would you do with it? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe try to get to new markets. Help me here. Well, the only thing is, it's your business. So if, if you had time, what would be the first step that you'd like to do when it comes to marketing? Like if you think, oh God, if only I had time, I'd do this. Yeah, well, I'd, I'll do only marketing and I'll leave the, the business basically to manage to other people. So I would train more people. Okay. I would, I have to, what I think about training is about making them understand the business so they share the mission that I have which yeah. is basically the, the basic the basis of our training because everything is, everything else is just details they need to share the spirit when it comes to marketing what's worked really well for you in the past um having other people speaking about me okay is that something that you could do to put some focus on right now so I think, uh, no, I, th I think uh, the fact that I, I got myself one PR company this year, and I think that was amazing, and I would like to do it in other markets. Okay. And when it comes to the other thing was financial resources, right? Right. That would be if I had financial, more financial resources, I would definitely do a few steps, like participate in more events, like fairs and everything, and um, getting into new markets, which is, this is the marketing um, uh, goal that I would like to have. So getting, getting into new markets. So in doing that, that's where you'd like to put your focus right away. Right. And now that's what we're going to work on in the next stage so think about that getting into new markets okay thank you very much for coming up here we're just going to try and speak to some other people as well thank you for having me hi <laughs> hello Heidi nice to meet you thank you you too this is this is really fantastic I'm I'm just what I needed this morning to get me going. So that's great. Right. I just needed I'm going to refer really, to my so. notes so that I 
don't forget anything and that I stay on topic. Um, I would say the things that are standing in my, my, mine is the client experience. That's my number one priority. I'm at about a, I, I think I'm about a five right now. And I really want to be a 10. That's the only one out of my three that I'm really dedicated to being a 10 because I believe everything else is going to come out of that. Um, I suffer from per perfection paralysis um, and a combination of an education addiction which is kind of a byproduct of COVID because during COVID, I started taking lots of classes and trainings and webinars. And, and while that was great, on the other hand, every time I take one, I go, oh, that area of my business isn't where it should be. I should tweak it to be this. Yeah. And so I need to dial it back. And I already prior to today, kind of made that decision in another part of my business where I was spending a lot of time, effort, and money on a training program that I know what I need to know now. I don't know everything, but I know what I need to know to progress, and it's time for me to implement. Perfect. So that's the big thing. Um, but the specific things I want to do is in between when I take on a client and I do, a, I'm a travel advisor. So yeah. I'm a, a travel planner and when in between, when I book my clients travel, because I insist on a, a substantial lead time so that we can do things right. And I'm not rushing or missing anything. There is a lag time in between that. And when they travel that I have been very bad about keeping in contact and keeping the touch points and whatnot. Okay. And also when clients, I existing clients who aren't currently scheduled to travel, but I know will have travel, I have yet to get my blog up and going. And that's something that even though it overlaps with marketing and sales, it, I see it as a client experience because I want them to feel that connection and relationship with me. And along with the blog, what has been causing the issue for me is... I am a very bad procrastinator. I've even taken classes on how to stop that. And since there's no immediate negative consequence of me not doing my blog and not keeping the contact like every week, oh, here's a little bit about your future destination or whatever. I find that when I get in a time crunch with busy work and administrative work, I go, oh, I'll push that another day. And pretty soon I've pushed it two weeks. So yeah. that's what I really need help somehow in. And I think it's mostly me in a mindset, getting over the perfection paralysis and the just realizing, yeah, it's not an immediate negative consequence, but over the long term, it's a big negative consequence. So certainly, I, thank you so much for sharing all that. If I had loads of time, I would love to speak about all of it because I think it's just relevant. Um, well, but pick whatever you want and leave the rest. <laughs> you, just speaking to perfectionism, particularly, which um, I've seen it come up in the chat a lot. And I work a lot with people, business owners, and it comes up all the time. Um, you've said that client experience is 10 out of 10 important for you, right? What about that is why is it so important to you? I believe that a positive client experience will lead automatically to referrals, which are free. Um, it will lead to establishing me as more of an expert in my field and a go-to person. Um, I also believe it will encourage my clients when I work with them to trust me more and not necessarily, one of the things that I and other travel advisors I meet with and that our friends talk about all the time is when we're spending an exorbitant amount of time on planning something for our clients. And then all of a sudden we wake up one morning and they've got an email. Oh, I saw this on the internet. I was checking the price on this. And I, I want them to feel so confident that I'm doing all that and doing it well that they eliminate that because it's a really big time suck when I have to go back and deal with that stuff. Exactly. So 
client experience leads to referrals, which means to bigger business and satisfaction. And as you said, confidence, all of those things, and they're super important. I actually, again, I've got a course about how to make your business referable because I believe in it so much and because it, it makes it easier not to market when we get stuck in all of that. Um, so anyway, what I want to say is you have to hold on. I want to ask you what's more important, all of those things that you just said or trying to make everything perfect? Obviously the former. I don't need to make everything perfect. And actually it's kind of appropriate that we're having this discussion because this week all of a sudden a switch got flipped and I have been working on all of that infrastructure and trying to make it perfect. And this week I'm finally getting organic traffic from my website and I'm getting referrals and they are my ideal clients. So okay. clearly my message of who I am and what type of travel I plan is getting through because I'm not getting people who for whom I am not a good fit. So yes. that is kind of probably going to fix a lot of this for me because I know my website's not perfect. I know my blog isn't up, but I don't need it to be perfect. Just do it. <laughs> it's true. It's it's all about progress on perfection. And I'm going to share a story very quickly because <clears throat> I used to work in uh, the jewelry district in London when I was at school. Um, I used to do back office of wholesale diamonds. And I don't know if anyone knows this, but one of the ways that you can ascertain the value of a gem, when they look at a, a ruby or a sapphire or a diamond, it's the ones that have flaws that have the higher value because they are natural. The more flawless something is, the more likely it was grown in a lab. So striving for perfection is kind of counterproductive. Now, I'd like you to keep those things in mind, Heidi, as you form your next step, because if we can, I'd like to try and get one more person up here because you're, you're doing great. And keep that in mind about all of those things, about the plus customer experience. Thank you so much for sharing. If we do one more and then I can finish off the 90 day challenge if someone would like to. Hi, Donna, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I will be quick. Um, my main priority is client growth. And I have been actively pitching myself to potential new clients. And I recently was a guest on a podcast. Um, and so I'm just trying not to obsess about the fact that all my efforts, I'm putting all this effort into it. And then I haven't signed any new clients yet. So I just wanted to see what your thoughts were on that. How long have you been doing that? Two months. Okay. Well, how long ideally would you like to be going down that road? I guess my whole, f the thing is, my focus is doing it organically. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be like, you should hire me. I want it to be more organic. And I think, um, Ideally, if I started to get new clients now, two months is feels like a long time for me. Um, but I, I guess I just maybe need to learn patience. I don't, I don't know. What about it is so important to be organic? It's, it's the way I do my business. Sure. So, so I, I have a concierge service and part of it is travel. Mm -hmm. Um, and the one thing my clients love about me is I don't push and yeah. I, let, I let my services speak for themselves. In which case you, the clients that you already have, they sound very much like your perfect clients for the service that you offer. Correct. But because during COVID, I let a lot of clients go because I realized we didn't share the same values. So I'm trying right. to make, make up for that. Yeah, I think that's a, always a tipping point in a business and I think it's actually very empowering to do that um, but so the podcast that you went on for example the channels that you're going to to do this organic marketing essentially is that where your ideal customer is yes for sure yes and whilst I understand the not pushy there's a difference between like explaining and then 
not giving someone a clear call to action. Is that what you're doing? No, I'm giving them a clear call to action. Yeah. Well, it's funny because as I have said in this 90 day plan, I have a theory that 90 days and or three months, uh, and we're at two months with you, is a really good testing ground to date an idea without necessarily committing to it and marrying it, which is what you're doing. You've been testing an idea for two months. So generally speaking, if after two months, if after three more months, if you're not converting in the way that you'd like to, I guess it's what needs to change. Okay. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I get it with the not wanting to be pushy, but is there, is there a tweak that could be made on the call to action that makes it easier for someone to say, actually, you know, or is it about the places that you're going? And again, that's not a criticism. It's just no. And most of my feedback is, I'm I'm really impressed because I also like keep in touch with them. Like, you know, just letting you know. Um, and most of them is you're. I'm definitely going to use you when the time comes up or the time is right or I, I'll keep you in mind. And so then I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's the biggest like yeah. But when is that, please? Um, but also, and I think this speaks to some of the things that some other people were saying, consistency in that, like how frequently you are charmingly persistent to them rather than pushy, let's say, um, that time will come sooner. And that's when a lot of this messaging, communications, marketing becomes so important. Like consistency is key because over time, you know, I, I run a mailing list for my company someone joined it in February I write to them two times a week and always give something always give something of value and they signed 12 months later oh nice okay you know, it, it took a while but then they were in my world so I think consistency is key I do love three months to test something and then really looking at if it's not working where could it be improved like I said if it's your key audience if it's the right perfect audience where you're going does that make sense yes it does thank you so much Good. Um, thank you very much, all of you, for coming to join. I should probably get back to finishing off this 90 day challenge now. Um, we won't take too much longer. We did allow an hour and 15 minutes. So um, hopefully you can all stick around for the end. Thank you so much for sharing. I know sometimes it can be a little bit daunting to grab the mic, but as I said, it does help other people and I can see that in the chat. So thank you. So moving on a step, we all have an area that we want to focus on and you have identified some of those roadblocks the things that are standing in your way now I would like you to make those the focus for the next 90 days so as I said in the in the first discussion you know if time is your biggest problem how can you make it a priority to affect your marketing plan what are the things that you really need to focus on right now so what i'd like to do is in your action plan you're going to set a 90-day milestone for your area of focus we're going to set some monthly goals and then some weekly action points to break it down you are going to get one of these um, that's going to come at the end with the handout so in your area of focus you're going to put marketing or client experience whatever it is I've given you three here because depending on the size of your organization, you might want to give different areas of focus to other people. If you are running a small operation, as I said, like me, it's kind of good to give just one area of focus your full attention because you're still trying to run your business at the same time. So the 90 day milestone, what do you want to have achieved in 90 days time? Speaking to some of uh, those ladies that came up, you know, if it is about marketing, what's the outcome that you want in 90 days? If it is about new business, if it's about client conversions, what's that number? What is it? You know what improvements need, need to be made because you wrote that at the beginning. So are some of those what you need to put in right now? The 90 day milestone, we want to make it stretchy but I want you to still make it achievable. Don't make a rod for your own back. And then what you're going to do is break it down month by month into different goals. Now, the specific knowledge of your own business is gonna be the best way for you to achieve that. 
Now, the reason I looked at those obstacles was because if that's what's standing in your way, we need to do the opposite of that. That's going to form your focus. Now, you don't have to set the second goal or the third goal yet because you're not there yet and anything could happen. We know that times change quickly. So what's the first step that you need to do in order to move you forward? And then you're going to break it down month by month. And I would like you to work on it like this. This is, a, this is your monthly planner, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So you're going to get clear on what your monthly goal is. Focus on that first and then put in place a week by week breakdown of what needs to be done and potentially by whom as well. Some people have been talking a lot about writing the blog. If that is the case, you know, is there going to be set up WordPress or something else? Like what's just the first step? Nothing too crazy. And if you're involving other people, or even if it's just for yourself, think about how you're going to report and account to yourself for the plan. Maybe you're just going to put a weekly meeting in on a day of the week so that you can all have a check in together. If that's just you, put the appointment in your diary. I do this too, especially if you're working on your own. It's easy to overlook, but it's so important as you iterate and move forward. Just as I just discussed in that last session, you know, what's working? Is it working? Do I need to tweak something? Um, and that's what goes along down the bottom. I did borrow this because, you know, no one's stealing these days from a big consulting firm that I was working with about what went well in the month and even better if. So what's gonna be even better next month that we could improve? That's usually where it comes up. If, if we feel that something's like not been good, how can we improve it? Because I don't want you to get stuck in what's not been good, just how you can improve it. So I hope I've been clear. We're gonna set your monthly goal, set yourself some weekly actions for that goal. Anyone else that needs to be involved in your organization, get some, accountability and agree a time that you're going to review all of these action points as well know what went well in your month and what would be better hopefully we're clear and then you go back to your 90-day plan and you set the goal for the second month and it all starts over again and then you do the third month and then at the end of April I'm going to get in touch with you and you can as I said you can repeat this over and over again throughout your business. And we're thinking steps, not leaps. And people have been dropping that into the chat. Keep remembering steps, not leaps. But all of these three goals are gonna be what's gonna give you that 90 day milestone. So here I am. Uh, one of the most important parts when I find when it comes to doing anything like this is having accountability. And I want to give that to you. In 90 days, I will email you a short form with some questions that you need to answer to find out how you're getting on. What progress have you made? And that's gonna kind of be early April because some of you are gonna hit the ground running today, maybe some of you on Monday. But the handouts that I believe Sadia has kindly shared in the chat, that's just got the framework of the 90 day plan in it. Now, it's been an absolute pleasure to get to speak to some of you today and I, just love hearing more about your businesses. If you do need some more help in specifics about executing this growth plan, as I said, customer retention, experience, um, and some of those marketing pieces, especially when it comes to trying to make marketing more intuitive, if you don't love social media, they're really my, my jams, my favorite things. So you can get in touch with me via the connections platform. Um, my email is natalie at theorangeside.com. And just, yes, in summary, if you, um, if you remember way back all that time when we started, we want to optimize your year for a successful growth plan. And we need to be clear on our destination, making sure that that's first, that you can become more and work that plan, steps, not leaps. I shared with you my model, which I hope will be some principles to really keep you moving forward. And it's just been a pleasure. A model is useful until it's not. So finally, yes, thank you. You can find me at all of these places. And as I said, I do send out an email every Friday. It's called the Friday Orange. 
And I tell you, that was a decision that made to just start and it's had 67 editions now. So if you'd like to subscribe, there is um, a link in the chat. Thank you so much for sharing your expert knowledge with us today. I speak for everyone when we say that we found this session to be invaluable. And if you do have any further contributions, then please feel free to email either myself or Natalie. And again, if you would like to get in contact with any of our advisors, then please do so via the community platform. Our next Connect Talks will be on the 23rd of February with um, Positive Luxury and Luxury Frontiers, where they will discuss sustainability and how to deliver a positive impact in luxury travel. Thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you all at our next event. So please feel free to end this call and take care.